Hi everyone, it's Tracy here from Art Fibre Stitch. I've got uh, some blue felt here, acrylic felt. I have some foam. I have a selection of needle felting needles. That first one held four and the other is single. And this is my broken wrist. Yes, I've broken my wrist. And I think that this would be an easy craft to do with one hand. So I'm going to start. I like the blue background. I like the way that we can use it and have parts of it showing because it's a good shadow colour. It's a good sky colour, but it's also a really good shadow colour. And can you see here as we're stabbing with our felting needle, we're pushing those fibres through. You have to go in a up and down motion. Don't push it in and then turn it and try and bring it out. It'll be trapped in the foam and it would snap. But as long as you follow that basic rule, up and down the same way that you go in, you come out and you're fine. Right, so that first fiber I used was some uh, wool roving and this time I'm going to use a yarn. I collect these bits of variegated yarn for the lovely colors that shade into each other. So much variety and I don't need to buy as much roving. It just takes the tiniest little snip. So here I'm going to pull it apart and I'll get a lot from that tiny little bit. And you see how I pull it apart until I have these lovely pieces of, of very fine, very fluffy pieces of wool. And that lovely variation of colour means that I can use it in a lot of different places. I'm just going to take a little strip of it now. And can you see how if I add it to that sky, we're starting to look like a sunrise or a sunset. You know, I have been battling cicadas, which are an insect we get here in Australia in the hot weather. They make a high-pitched squeal. But now, here comes the thunderstorm. It's going to chase them away, but it's also going to be awfully loud. So, let's try and work around it. It may just be atmospheric. I hope so. We'll just keep recording whilst we can. I'm layering these fine blends of colour over top of each other. I'm using that blue background by allowing it to poke through in areas. And it looks pretty good. But these fine, gossamer fine, thin layers of colour over top of each other. I think that's the way to go with this. Not too thick and getting it down. You can always take it off as well, like I just showed you there. And but we're tacking it down. I mean, later on we could come back and we can give it a, a real stabbing. But um, at the moment I just want to see where I want things. So I'm quite happy to just do that. Let's grab some of this other variegated yarn. Good colours in here, very different. See this dark blue that I'm using? It's a purpley smoky blue and a pink tinge. I'm just going to add some in here. I haven't decided yet what it is, that's okay. But I do like to add in some darker colours, some light colours and some mid colours. That blue background of acrylic felt is a mid kind of colour. And this kind of yarn here with the so many different colours just imagine you're not having to buy loads of different, uh, different bags of roving. You can just use these things. You know, a little bit of, of woolen yarn that has so many different colours in it. Very handy. I really just like colour and putting it down and see. It'll tell me what it wants to be. I know I've got some sort of sunset sky. I keep this box of scraps close by. I have yarns and bits of roving and ends of different pieces. 
of wool and sometimes I'll find something I want in there and I'll add a bit in just to see I really liked this teal kind of colour mohair kind of coils crinkly and I think that would be nice I'm going to pop some of that in and using that blue behind works beautifully with all those colours so far a good start let's see what else I've got it doesn't just need to be um, fibres, it could be fabrics here's a piece of silk, it's a silk scarf once again I go for things that have got different colours in them that blend nicely because I can use it I'm just going to cut this uh, rolled hem from the scarf off that's a bit big for me uh, you can't rip so I'm just going to do a little snip and then rip it now I've got a tiny piece of this now it won't push through really not very well but what it will do is crinkle up every time I put that uh, needle in it's bunching it up and crinkling it up and making a really exciting surface but it's not really staying there so what I will do once I've gotten it there with that nice texture is I'll get a little bit of some roving and I'll just pop it over and especially over the edges that'll hold it down but even uh, in the bulk of it it's going to go through the silk and out through uh, that that blue felt and it's sticking there so I can put things on top of it later too but uh, I just wanted to see what it was like I quite like it it's something different and that's what I like to do add different things in and try them out and see what they're like I'm quite happy with that what I'm looking at now is some other fabric this is an organza a shot organza that's when it's one colour but shines a different colour in the light I'm going to do the same with it it's got quite a few uh, a loose weave so it has holes in it and these fibres from the wall that we're putting in now will go through and will really attach it quite nicely makes a really interesting background so it's blue but in some lights we're going to get that lovely gold shine subtle though especially as it's shaded in with those bits of roving that we attach see I'm going to put it over it in places I don't want to obscure it too much but I do want to have some of it you know really poking out we're getting a nice diagonal line see how your eye comes in at one side and follows the lines out it just adds interest rather than just having straight horizon see here can you see that lovely gold shine on that organza and let's see what else we can play with back to the box of scraps here is another yarn this one is like a fishnet almost like fishnet stockings and um, I'm going to use a little bit of that I'm going to use some dark like I said it's really good to have a, a mid color a dark color for shade and light colors for highlights that makes for an interesting picture so I'm just going to use a little bit of this I can tease it apart it's got lovely big holes in it so I know that I can trap it underneath some roving and it will look good 
but I'm just trying to tease it out a bit. I did use this in some uh, seascapes. I've used it quite a bit. I find it very handy. I just wanted to see if I could use it here by adding in that dark colour. Maybe I'll turn that into my horizon. But I don't want it to be that dark. So I'm going to now use something else. I'm going to lighten it. I'm just going to use a little bit of some different ones. I've got a green here. You know, and if I really have it nice and sparse on top of that, it, it's looking much more realistic now, like a, sh a shaded area, perhaps a valley. Here's another piece of fabric you can use. This is scrim. And you can poke big holes in it. I love it. It's like a, a muslin or a, or a cotton or in some countries you call it cheesecloth. But it's, uh, it's great stuff. And once again it has a lot of holes in it so that it's perfect for needle felting through. I'm just teasing out some of this jade colour. I'm just adding it in there because I think that would be a really a nice background for a well, nice background for a foreground if you know what I mean but as a background colour I might put lighter colours on top of it. Let's peel it up again and I'll show you how well all of those fibres are coming through. It's really meshing with that background becoming a one. But this corner, nothing is in there yet. I need to have a bit of a plan. Yes, that blue is still too dark. I'm just going to add some more. I'm using a dark navy blue blend, a wool silk blend, so it has some silky threads through it. Can you see how it's breaking up that dark colour? This is probably going to be our horizon, I think. Yes. Adding more green in. Like the top of the hill. You see how here, I've added in some lighter greens, some interesting colours. When you look closely, it's great. You've still got those blues showing underneath. It's a good start. We'll have a look at a few close-ups. There's the silk above the organza strip. You can see the organza there. Yeah, I just love those fibres. I think they look really good together. I think it's always wonderful to experiment with things like that. As you go, you might find more areas that disturb you or ones that you think you could change. Like I say, you can pull it off. But I'm wanting to decide where this horizon is. But that dark line there, that sort of almost looks like a horizon, but I don't want it there. I'm just going to use that dark colour as the shading behind. So I'm going to add this colour and make some nice little curls there like the tops of clouds. Just tacking it down here and there to say that's what I want to do. I'm going to use some of this darker burnt orange. Tease it out really really fine. And just shade a little bit there. It's on top of the dark, but it's also on top of the uh, light cream colour. And I, it just shades the whole thing in together. And I can use white. And that will lighten everything up there. Look like cloud. See how I can tease it up or down or move it 
move the colour over top or expose more underneath. It's very atmospheric I think now that sky. As you go you can just keep going back to areas you've already done. Give it a bit of a jab. Jab, jab, jab. Stabbing is is uh, what I call it because it's uh, very therapeutic in that respect. Look at this, uh, an orangey kind of colour, burnt orange. I quite like that when you have a colour in one area. You know, like that sky has got peachy oranges in. And we're just adding a tiny bit of it into the other band of colour, the green band of colour, just to make it fit in better. Here's another nice yarn. It has flat bits and then little loops. It's um, used quite a lot in, in my artwork. It can be leaves or it can be shrubs or it could be the froth on waves or it can be fluffy clouds. It can be a lot of things. You just use that texture. So I'm just going through from one side and out the other in a nice wavy line. I'm not trying to say exactly this is what this is. It's just contours that we're hoping is going to look good. And I decided I'm going to pull that sky a little bit further down there, make it a little more obvious. So I'm just going to put some of those sky colors in there, that lo lovely um, peach pink colors. I really do like these things to build themselves and to not have a strong idea of, you know, it has to be like this. Allow happy accidents to change your direction. I could add some blue into that sky if I thought that that was too much colour. Here's another hairy yarn I use quite a lot. And I always consider it makes great grasses. Makes great lots of things. I just like the texture and it is once again um, variegated. Experiment with little bits and different yarns and see what they'll do. This one will felt in a little bit sometimes but it doesn't, uh, it certainly works better if you have a little bit of uh, roving over top. Now I've grabbed uh, a piece of sari silk yarn where they use all of the leftover threads and things from the loom floor um, when they're making saris, silk saris, and they twist them together to make a nice yarn. I think it's, you know, really sculptural and beautiful and shiny. I'm just going to pop a little bit of green over it and allow bits of it to show through and bits of it to be trapped with the roving over top. And like I say, you, this will probably need a good going over afterwards and to make sure it all is all going to stick nicely. But isn't it fun to go ahead and just sort of plan what you want to do? Allowing the colors and the textures to guide you. I'm really happy. I love that we only used tiny scraps. We've created a picture. I think it's just like painting or pastel painting. You know, layering wonderful colors. You know, what's it going to be if I tried to put pink on top of a jade, for example? You know, it's, um, it's very interesting. And although I love it and I could go on forever, I'm just going to have a little look here at a few finishing touches and we'll finish off. I've added a nice sort of teal colour down there to blend that green into the blue because it's in between those two colours. And I still don't think we've got a good enough, uh, a good enough horizon. Just something else to pop there. Maybe uh, it's probably best to be a 
like I say, a dark blue, dark navy. I'm just going to pop it there underneath where I put that cloud. Just a thin line. Just to make that show out even more. But that's, that's the edge of the mountain range up against the sky. Let's have a close look. We've got some nice fibres trapped in there. So what a great one-handed craft. I'm not going to put any stitching on this one at all because I want to show people how nice this craft is on its own. But you could certainly add flowers and trees and all kinds of that things to that if you wanted to use it more as an interesting background for further textile artwork or embroidery. So what do you think? Look at that. I just love that organza and the silk and this, the texture. I can get very excited about this and I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you have a go. It really is fun. Start collecting your little bits and pieces so that you're ready next time and uh, we'll see what we can make. I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have don't forget to press like subscribe if you would like to and I'll see you for the next video.